Now, I understand that you have an actual demonstration you're going to show us where you're going to be the physician and Parvati, you're going to be the nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and see what a live session looks like. Very well. And so this is the Sunny Space environment. And I see my colleague, Dr. Dev, is here. And today we have in this in bed, bed A, a uh, woman who we identified earlier has been in an auto accident and she is hemorrhaging vaginally and we don't see the blood here yet because they've just cleaned the sheets but this patient and Parvati would you get the wall monitor up we need to know what's going on with this patient <laughs> sure absolutely and you see her, you hear yes, her coughing Dr. and so let's and uh, okay. why don't you do the same okay and so we'll put up her her monitor so, so all of those things on the wall are active like you click on a device and it assumes a medical Go here function and do full screen they so are and so it, these are the smart objects we could take and show you uh, how everything in the world is is active and that is part of why it won the award uh, for artificial intelligence and so here you see, Parvati, would you get us a blood pressure by clicking on the headboard? Yes, and Dr. Heinrichs, I shall do it right away. And so when she does that. We have now put the blood pressure cuff on the patient. And if one's looking at the vital signs monitor, bingo, there you see the values. So it wants me to use the EMR so that and I have a positive identification with the patient and I'm not doing these actions on the wrong patient. It's a safety measure. Okay, so now Parvati just expressed a step that's necessary with every patient. You must identify the patient with their record and we use an armband in the hospital. We don't need to talk about armbands here, but to go through the thinking process. And we see a patient who is very hypovolemic and with a fast heart rate. We've got to do something about this, Parvati. Uh, let's give this patient some fluids, please. And go... Ready to give fluids? Yes. And so if you go to the IV stand, you'll get a menu, and she can choose what kind of fluid, and the dose <laughs> and the volume, and how fast to give it. These are decisions that every clinician must make. And if she didn't understand me, She'll say, what did you say? Or did you say this? And that's the, how we uh, take care of patients. You see, in this world, the saline bags are hanging on the IV stand, indicating... Started two liters of normal saline, running uh, push. Very well. Now, this patient is hypotensive. Uh, blood pressure is low. So please go to the medication cabinet. This, I'm going to give you the verbal order to give the patient a vasopressor. And that's near the bottom of the list. We've got a whole bunch of drugs in this. Which vasopressor would you like, oh, Dr. Heinrichs? Uh, use dobutamide. It's a common one. It's readily available. Dobutamide at uh, 0.7 milligrams per minute, that, IV. That's correct. Put it right in the IV so she gets it quickly. And you've done that, and wow, it affected the blood pressure straight away. It's now up to 94, 95. So the things we're doing are working. Now, please go up and let's now find out, since the patient is getting better, what the problem really was by doing an ultrasound of her abdomen. We had the report that she ha was having, she's pregnant and she's bleeding, and she was having pain, and let's see what kind of condition she so has, okay? Uh, and so if we go to the ultrasound machine and perform a scan, there we'll see a video clip showing, in fact, that there's a fetal head off to my left and a blood clot to the right. So this would lead a clinician to know, oh, this is a condition called abruptio placenta. And, <laughs> and it is safe to do a vaginal exam Whereas if it were another condition, it would not be safe. And so it's a differentiating uh, decision. Please give the patient some, uh, check the uh, 
oxygenation by going to the headboard. Right away. And doing a finger clip, please. And let's see what the SAO2 shows and on the screen. Applying a finger clip, uh, SAO2 is reading at uh, 80? At 80, yes. Well, let's fix that. And, and the way to do that gives some oxygen. We start, can do, yeah. Shall I start the oxygen? Please, go to the gas machine where you'd find some oxygen. Giving oxygen by mask. That's good. And so the mask is on her face. And so we're now seeing this patient be stabilized. So I think in our demonstration, we've uh, seen a number of the dynamic aspects of Plenty Space that cause people to get excited because it's like real life. Poverty and my discussion would be like we would have beside the bed adjacent to a patient. Now right now you're talking to each other and you're sitting next to each other. When people are using space, they might be in totally different locations. How do they communicate Absolutely. then? Absolutely. We would normally put headsets on, you know, we would wear headsets and this uh, world is voice enabled using uh, VOIP. So we've had people across the continent communicating, being together in this one space and feeling like they're really there together. Now, is this a finished product or is it still under development? I mean, is this ready to go to market or? We are, uh, we, yes, we are definitely selling it right now. Um, a lot of folks want to take what we have developed, think of it as a platform and build their own, uh, to their own specification on top of it. So we've had, um, for example, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement that does a lot of safety training for hospitals. And we've developed uh, safety uh, scenarios for them. Uh, the patient that you see in the next, uh, in, in the next bed uh, is a person who is undergoing, uh, in, he has infection. And that's the kind of person to whom we might uh, uh, give, uh, he might go on a ventilator. <coughs> And when he goes in a ventilator, there's a lot of risk for infection. So we are not going to put him on a ventilator right now, but we, mm -hmm. if we did that, we would want the nurse and the doctor to be, uh, to take certain precautions, such as um, removing sedation once a day to make sure that perhaps he can be taken off the ventilator. Uh, oral care, uh, raising the head of the bed so that he doesn't aspirate uh, liquids. Uh, and that kind of safety training is what they asked us to develop on top of Clinic Space. Now, is, you, is there usually somebody on the team who is the leader who is instructing everybody else, like the leader and the students? Yeah, Lira, why don't you? We do that several ways. Yes, at the beginning for initial training, uh, in fact, people are shown PowerPoint slides and videos to prepare them for uh, a uh, efficient use of this space and uh, time in class and so they usually go in groups of three to four individuals with a instructor and there are two beds here and so you can have two teams with two different patients and learning two different objects in today's lesson and that would be one way or you could use this as a way of having people be certified are they meeting the mark of of the excellence of care expected after a training. So the whole gamut from initial to end training. Well, it's a very impressive product. How long did it take to develop it? Well, you have to know that we have a long history behind this. We've been working with virtual worlds, developing them since 2004, when Adobe first came out with Atmosphere. Some of your audience might remember that. Um, so this is our fourth go around. We've worked with Adobe, we've worked with Olive, with Second Life, and we wanted to create something that was browser-based, did not need a lot of complex graphics, and we found Unity as a good engine on which to do this. When we, st when we started, it probably was six months from start to finish to have a complete working system, which I think is incredibly fast, actually. That's because we've done it many times before. What would you say was the hardest part of developing this? Mm. Is it the technical medical part or, or the software programming? Or? I think the virtual patient is pretty difficult because you're, we are creating patients that uh, aren't just a little sick. They could be very, very sick. 
And there's very little data out there about, for example, the vital signs of a really sick person. So we had to talk with a lot of physicians, create the virtual patient, test it on them, see if they felt it was real. Now I think you also have some PowerPoint slides which you're going to show, which shows some more details so of the clinic space experience, including patients. Let's take a look at some of those slides and then we'll finish up. Uh,